Is there a fallback vote? Um. If you can't come to a consensus, does it go to a vote? Yeah, we have. We try to just turn it away, but yeah, we've voted <coughs> things. Okay. Um. All right. So what are the main benefits? Okay, so let's clarify what these different ones are, right? Mm -hmm. So people know Robert's Rules of Order. I uh, make a motion to do this, and there's very strict, like, how the meeting goes, and then you vote on something all in favor, all opposed. That's stuff that you've seen on TV or at council, city council meetings, that kind of stuff. Yeah, a lot of organizations do it, not just, not just government. A lot of uh, nonprofits that have been around for a while use Robert's Rules of Order. And there's a clear chair, you know, that runs that. Um, I don't think any of the co-ops are considering that, so we're not going to go into depth on it. But just to know that there is a modified one that's a little bit more flexible and a little bit chiller. That's called Roberta's Rules of Order, <coughs> but it still has, you know, a pretty uh, uh, clear, you know, process that you can follow to get to a decision. Um, so it's consensus, but as we've talked about, there's different kinds of consensus. So what is pure consensus? So oh, pure consensus, like I said, pure. Oh, pure, 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 pure yeah. consensus. Can so someone try to explain what pure consensus is? Everybody has to agree. No yeah. matter what, if someone blocks, is there any way you can? You can, you can then try and come up with a compromise or, a, or an alternative. Uh, decision, uh, and you just keep doing it <coughs> until everybody agrees. Even if everyone knows that that's a federal agent in your uh, in your group and they're blocking. They're not allowed in our group. Okay. <laughs> do, you, do you have an, your bylaws like it's in our bylaws? No, no, <laughs> this is available. Um, <laughs> Okay, uh, so what is modified consensus? We we heard what how Global Village. What are other kinds of modified consensus? So it goes to a vote. I mean, it goes to consensus. Consensus is not achieved. A new proposal is put up. Still not achieved. It might go to a vote. Most of them go to like a two-thirds majority vote. What what are other kinds of modified consensus that are out there? Minus one. Minus consensus one. minus one. Can someone explain that? Um, I've seen this most often used in like groups that have someone who's just there to disrupt the process, and so they're like, well, consensus minus X amount of, like, this is how many people that can be blocking before it becomes a real block. And consensus minus one is sometimes used also for <coughs> getting someone out of a group. So that person who's being subject to getting out of the group is, uh, can you know, can't block can't that block decision. That decision. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, any other decision-making processes that people know of or that they use in, in groups? Usually the most people. informal thing is, is a consensus process, right? If no one's saying anything, the decision is made and you move on. Uh, but consensus vote. can be more explicit. Yeah. Majority vote. We didn't even talk about <coughs> majority vote. <laughs> majority vote is used in some of these other ones, but there are groups that use just majority vote. They don't use all the r rules of order or whatever. Um, I mean, and what are the different kinds of majority votes you can do? Well, just a one majority and then a two-thirds majority. Two Simple majority, anything above half, right? Or two-thirds majority or three-quarters majority. Those are all called super majorities, right? Two thirds and three quarters. You can do other percentages too. Yeah, and then, and then you have to define for that. Whenever you have voting, you also have to define a quorum. Um, for some other other of these, you have to define quorum. What does a quorum mean? Who knows? The minimum number of members that have to be present for uh, for a decision to be made. So that can be a pure number in your bylaws. It can be say uh, ten people are constituted <coughs> quorum. But more often, it's a percentage of the number of board members you have or a percentage of the number of members you have. 50% right? of members need to be present in order for you to make these kind of decisions, right, for a form to be reached. 
All right. Any other decision making processes we use? So let's do a comparison of consensus based. We'll lump in consensus and modify consensus and versus voting or Robert's rules kind of stuff, okay? Um, so what are some benefits of consensus? Yeah. In a consensus system where you get a you generally get a feeling that everyone is working towards the same goal and you don't have that one person or group of people that kind of takes a side and uh, feels like they're not being represented properly. Uh, and it encourages uh, that everyone, if there is a disagreement, that we resolve that disagreement rather than voting and moving on. Great summary. So minorities aren't, minority groups or minority individuals aren't just plowed over. Um, and it moves people towards a team. People feel ownership of that decision together too, right? What else? Take longer. Well, we're not getting, is that better? We're saying oh. positives right now. <laughs> Once the decision is made, everybody's on the same page. So if there was, without consensus, you may find that when you're trying to implement a program or, or whatever, that some folks aren't actually, because they didn't vote for it, aren't actually supporting it after the fact. And it's also argued that well-facilitated consensus uses the collective knowledge of a group better, and you get to deeper conversations, deeper, better decisions, better solutions. Um, yeah? It's more empowering to people who may have like, a higher voice. It's, you can feel like they're more a part of the decisions being made rather than like, kind of being swept over by the louder people that people who usually make decisions. Okay. Any other positives? <coughs> How about uh, potential negatives or downsides to consensus? Takes longer. Takes longer. You might not come to a decision. To the takes longer, I think I generally agree. Sometimes, you know, um, people have a more stake or they have decided who will be doing that decision by the time they get to a decision. But in general, yeah. Any other downsides to consensus? Easy to disrupt. Yeah, if you have someone who is simply not on the same wavelength or same page or or just wants to like do it his way or her way. <coughs> Maybe fewer people are, are familiar with consensus too, so it's a little bit harder for a new person to jump right into the process and fully understand it, especially if you have all these like hands <coughs> rolls and stuff going on. Like, but, um, all right, so voting or Robert's Rules of Order, what are some benefits of that, good things about voting? Yeah? Robert's Rules of Order is great when you have a group of grumpy old people, which is what it was made for. <laughs> um, it's great when you have really big committees of people that don't know each other or like each other, which happens very often. Yeah. Yeah. How about for quick decisions like going on strike, that kind of thing? I think it works. Yeah, also like it's faster when you mm -hmm. need when you're like in, in a, like an alliance or like so some groups that like you say don't work together is definitely like faster. Like they're not used to or, or they're not this in the same even <coughs> the same politics yeah. when when you have like politicians that wander for one side I I also think like voting versus the whole shebang is, it's a whole different thing, because Robert's Rules of Order is really strict. Mm -hmm. And 
just like you, it's, it's a whole different thing. It's a whole different like story if you're following Robert Hughes' order. As like in some cases, it can it can intentionally slow things down uh, in order to keep it. One of the nice things about it is since it intentionally slows things down, you get one topic at a time, and you don't have you don't get off track, and you don't get like people yelling over each other. Mm -hmm. Ideally, so. Uh, yeah, it's great for strangers. I think that's really key. Mm -hmm. Where you want to actually navigate relationships or something. Mm -hmm. Or don't want to navigate yeah. relationships. Yeah, I think the thing with that is that it's, it facilitates that, but it means that they remain strangers. Mm -hmm. And it like cuts out all the other things that are involved in the decision making right. process. Which is like, sure, if that's what you're going for. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think the idea of collective knowledge is really key to what makes consensus so important, is that you're really, <coughs> uh, it's, it's, um, you know, it's like a, making decisions as a social body, not as an individual or something like that. So let me just do a little bit more explanation of consensus. It, it's hard to, to do it really quickly, but we're running out of time, so. Um, it really takes practice, right, to do it well, um, to facilitate a good consensus process well. Because often what we do is we talk about something, there's an idea, and no one sends any objections, so it, it, we just go on with it, right? But um, well-executed consensus, <coughs> often it, um, it's good to be really clear about what's on the table, what's the proposal, and then if, and ask for clarifications ask for concerns. Instead of asking, is everyone okay with it, ask, is anyone not okay with it? Is anyone, does anyone have concerns with this? And leave some time and space, right? Or if your group does like to have the hand signals, TSB, for example, does this, this, and this. Can you explain what these mean? Sure. <laughs> 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 um, what's it called? Um, okay, so this means that everyone's okay and that you're totally fine with your no consensus means, um, yeah, maybe, you know, um, you know, if there's all some direction in here, this means, like, it's a blocking concern, which means that decision can't go forward and um, has to be talked about and brought back, and another proposal usually has to be made. Um, so if you look at this decision-making path one, um, <coughs> This on the left is how it often functions, right? Boom, you get to a decision, the star, right? Um, but sometimes they're, you know, it's a little bit more complicated to come up with a rough proposal. So, all right, you're brainstorming or you're just discussing something, the ideas that come out, and you pull together a proposal that is clear enough to say this will be the decision, right? We're talking about what artists to have at our block party. We talk about this band, that band, this band. And then someone pulls it together and says, OK, we'll invite these three bands. And if they can't make it, then a third band. Any concerns, <coughs> right? Um, you ask for concerns, no concerns, um, consensus. All right. Um, or if there are still concerns, someone says, no, that third band uh, you know, has some songs that are really sexist. Um, okay, so let's put, uh, the, you know, fifth band at third place, new, new proposal, any concerns, none, consensus, still not, okay, we, we need to move on to food, we still don't have a, a consensus on bands yet, can these two people who have differing ideas of it go work out a proposal and come back to the group? Or can you work on it for next time and come back with a proposal? Or do we just need to vote on this, have these two things and vote on them? Do we need to try a straw poll? What is this? Do people know what a straw poll is? No. It's like voting, but it's not binding. You put, you put a few options up, and you say, who is in favor of this? And it's to get a sense of what, where people are at in the room. And then sometimes you do a straw poll, and everyone's for one thing, and boom, you got consensus. But usually, you do a straw poll, you find that two out of the five are strongest, and then you know to try to combine those two into one solid proposal. Right? Sometimes people do like a fist of five, where you're like one to five in terms of like where you're at with it. So. 
All right. consensus facilitators if you ever have a big you know meeting or strategic planning that you need help with or or trainers that you know we can come in and help do a training with your co-ops. So our issue is not reaching decisions it's following decisions. That's different. Yeah. So like systems and I think that that's something we haven't done like creating systems for follow-ups like good agendas, so that, like, I feel like that we're going to do facilitation, and I think that that might help, you know, like, to have an accountability person. Um, okay, so in our agenda, for the people <coughs> that just came in, this is what we have. Um, I don't know why decision making it has better to prevent the to cure if it was there, but anyways. That that was how we put it last time. I guess having a decision making thing before you start in like running your co op is important, right? Like I, I think that was probably something we should have started with, but like yeah. it's very important. Because if you come up against a tough issue and they're like, and then you decide on the, the decision making process, that that one issue will inform it instead of everyone's desire. So for example, there's a consensus, consensus issue that someone thinks they can win a majority vote on, they're gonna push for a majority vote instead of consensus process, even though, you know, that kind of thing. Um, so yeah, decide it, and you kind of have to, be in consensus about your first <laughs> that first decision about what kind of decision you can make. And that everybody understand what the decision again. Because even if you have consensus, if there's a bunch of people that don't understand it, it's still gonna be not very uh, democratic, right? Because like mm -hmm. if, if somebody doesn't know how it works and so when you have new members, it's important to train them on the <coughs> process. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can we eat? <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what am I smelling? Downstairs. <laughs> so my favorite and least favorite thing about Roberts Resort is when I was in high school, there's this cool thing called Molly Imaginations which follows Roberts Rules of Order. I'm sorry, what was the call? It's called Molly Imaginations. Okay. It's like a debate club, except you pretend you're in the U.S. And they follow Roberts Rules of Order or whatever. And one of my friends discovered that depending on who your facilitator is, you if you just don't like the group the group of people you're with, just motion for a roll call vote, everything stops for 15 minutes. That, that's one of the cases where Robert's Rules of Order can be abused. Because you can play games with it. You can play games with it. Yeah, the and person that knows it very well can, can, can basically control. run around with everyone else. Well, I think that's what it was made for. <laughs> <laughs> it was made for Robert. <laughs> made for Robert. If you're Robert, you win. Okay, any other comment before we move on? I mean, it's salad day, we can start with salad. <laughs> So, um, I'm going to do a presentation on facilitation, but before we do that, um, does anyone have like a document on facilitation in your co op? Like, the, do you use any specific? Style facilitation or 
is, is usually one person that you usually rotate? Yeah, we yeah. rotate. We have like a chart where, um, sorry. Yep. I don't want to be on camera, thank you. Um, we have like a chart that we set up and it's like, um, a week this person will be a note taker, a week this person will be like a time taker, um, well, not a time taker, a time keeper. keeper. And like this person will also be like the person who rotates. So as the days or weeks go on, we rotate so each and everybody can be able to like facilitate if they don't have an idea. Did you guys get trained on facilitation? Um, a couple of times, yes, we did. But you know, some people just come natural. There's also a, a checklist that we use. In Roots, <coughs> it says, remember to make an agenda like this. Remember to find a, time, a timekeeper and a, you know, um, those kind of things. So we're happy to share them. They're on the Worcester Roots website. Those kind of resources. Yeah, I think that's it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so... People here don't, do you guys have, do you guys have like any facilitation? We have like, no. <laughs> so how do you guys run your meetings? Like everybody has, we're not coordinated right now, so we can get back to you on that maybe next year. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> no, that's fine. It's fine. How about the <coughs> greenhouse? How you guys do you have any particular style or format for facilitating meetings? So for like planning meetings or for running meetings? For running meetings. So we generally try to have a, uh, a agenda beforehand where um, at least uh, like within the PI group we generally send out an agenda and if somebody has something they want to add to the agenda, they, they just can modify the agenda at which time we will go. Mm -hmm. um, and we might start doing that with the previous year as well. It always sounds like somebody's having the class. <laughs> and that I've done stuff like that in other groups I've worked with. And basically, my, my favorite style of meeting is there's no agenda, there's no meeting. And that way, you never come to a meeting and you're just like, okay, no. <laughs> um, yeah, but generally we say we start each meeting with what a report back and then go directly into the talking points. It seems to work. Okay. So did everybody have just meetings, like regular meetings, or do you have different kinds of meetings? folks have different kinds of meetings, like board meetings and then like committee meetings. It's just one meeting and everybody's there. We talk about forming committees, but you don't have committees. We have meetings that are, they're not committee meetings, they're more like different task meetings. At Social Arts, we have board meetings and cooperator meetings because during the pedicab season, folks who ride pedicabs aren't necessarily member owners yet. Mm -hmm. um, and then we have scheduled, we've started to schedule co-working time into the week so that most people are expected to attend at least one co-working time and that's where multiple members will get together to work on their independent tasks, but at the same time. Mm -hmm. So, we have like I don't know why in the in the work in the stuff we had we didn't have the aorta stuff which is like the one I use the most <coughs> but um, but you know it's a lot of techniques of facilitation and usually one of the things that I think a lot of people usually do that is helpful is to have a co-facilitator like somebody that is like you you're running the meeting but it's somebody helping you to read if somebody is like anxious or if 
something is not going well, like somebody that would like be more paying attention to fo to the rest <coughs> of the group. Um, I think that's important. It's important to have one person taking notes. I think in co-ops is very use. Usually people rotate the roles because it's important that everybody knows the roles. But it's also like good to get used to different styles. Usually even if you're running a meeting with the same type of agenda or the same decision making and same times all the time, like different people run meetings different ways. So some people even skip meetings if they don't like one person style, you know, or mm -hmm. get people really frustrated. So I, I think it's important to like go back to that and like have have at least five minutes after a meeting and be honest about what things work well, what things don't work well and um, I think it's important because that's where the work starts, right? Like that's where the decision making happen, that's where you decide everything what you can do and what you don't. So I think notes are important. Um, very clear understanding of who's doing what is important. Do you guys use any, did anyone have here like using special formatting for, for taking notes that helps to like move with items? Generally, attendance and then agenda items with the discussion. I, mean. but I appreciate the reminder that um, it's important to rotate these roles because I know that we have been like just a few people taking up the facilitator roles, and there are other people that can be doing that. Too. Mm -hmm. So yeah, one, one of the things that I think is very useful is like to have a calendar, <coughs> with, you know, the start of the year is good for that. Like have a calendar when you have your meetings, who usually is like A, B, C, D, like depending on your name, but that's what a lot of people use, or your age. I mean, it can be m different things or an order. Just, you know, that, that makes sense when people show up to meetings, but when we have a defined sequence and people don't show up, then so we usually work with what we have. Yeah, but if you have, so maybe we'll list that back, like before having meetings, it's a lot of work to do too, right? Like to have an, an agenda, to ha so that person that is supposed to be facilitating that meeting have to do some <coughs> right, like to gather the agenda before, to send a reminder, to um, ask people if they have done their tasks. Um, I mean, it, it, you know, it's, it's part of being a facilitator to do that too, usually. Other, other calls might have other systems. But uh, I don't know if you guys have a different system. No, we do. <coughs> Uh, I mean, it's, the, it's many styles, and everybody have different things to to figure this out. Or like, if four people are really good at if you have four people that are very good at facilitating, four people that are very good at taking notes, it might be an agreement that that's what they do all the time. But um, usually, that's not democratic, or people are not learning a different skill. Um, but um, who use a, a stacking and who knows what stacking is? Uh, I'm diggers, but we use stack at my name at the shop. And it's basically someone is the, um, the person who's the stack taker or the stacker. And um, essentially anybody who raises their hand instead of like popcorn style, everyone kind of talking over each other, um, we basically the, the stack. The stacker um, keeps track of who, so kind of silently keeps track of who had their hands up when, and then calls them so that there's more of a um, even flow of conversation instead of people talking over each other. 
And we usually only employ it when pe- when it when it's like necessary. Otherwise, it's just kind of free flow. But when it's like, <coughs> when it's like a hot topic, then we employ it. Mm-hmm. I mean, stacking is really useful, especially in an organization that is a group that is taking over most of the time and is a group of people that don't speak, right? Or or is a group of people that usually don't have a voice and we wanted to like have a more democratic um, meeting. So um, the stacker have the ability of saying, well, even though you came, was up before somebody else's, if you have talked too much, you know, to say, no, I cannot take. So, so it's different styles of stacking and for different reasons, but it's a very important skill to get and to get um, trained on because it's very useful when it's hot topics, when it's too many people, or, or when you don't know. Do people get that? The normal stack is uh, saw that hand first, and that one, and that one. One, two, three. Okay, and you're on the list. But then there's progressive stacking, right? It's like I saw that hand, then that hand, then that hand. But women haven't spoken yet, so we'll put that one on the top. And then you know, youth haven't had a had a chance to speak, so that's next. And you you switch up the stacks so that people quiet, with quieter voices or or voices that haven't been heard in a while get get uh, priority. Because sometimes you don't get through the stack. You get halfway. A lot of people want to speak. You get halfway, and you run out of time. Right. <coughs> How do you determine stacks? Like you said, women, you, whatnot. I mean, is there, is there a specific like format? So usually, like like I say, if you have a good staff or a person that is trained on that, and and you're like, no, usually you know what is the issue. Usually has been an issue, ongoing issue, and people have. That's why I say like having five minutes after a meeting to talk about these things is important, right? Like, so people have time to like say, well, I couldn't talk today because so and so was taking so much time, or and and sometimes it's it's a set of questions. I, I ought to have like a very good um, reading on what are the usual problems in in groups mm-hmm. and and how to deal with those, but um, it comes up, like I, I feel like it, with experience comes up to to figure out what are the dynamics in a group, or, or if you get hired, I, I do that all the time, like you get hired because somebody is suing someone for, I don't know, for race, racist comments or for whatever, sexist comments, and usually they hire a consultant to like, have this review mm-hmm. on, on that, and then you know you you kind of just say it. it's like it might not be that that's the the case, but the case is like you don't have a good system or you don't have, and the people that always used to speak just speaks over mm-hmm. other people. So um, yeah, it's important when you have diverse groups or in age and class and sex or color. It's important to. And that comes with, so those techniques that are over there, they're very good to like think about it before you have a meeting. And maybe <coughs> you guys have like a yearly retreat and you're gonna do some strategic planning, maybe that's a good time to have like those conversations, how meetings are going, who has what skills and who can train on what. But um, so it talks about um, good, good ways to, um, when somebody speaks a lot and don't say much, or when somebody, you know, don't say much and you don't, like not everybody got it, like people that know that person may get what that person was trying to say. So a good facilitator or a good note taker is very good at paraphrasing. Is this what, what are you trying to say? Is this what like, for the, especially for the notes, right? Like, um, or or if you have different languages and different cultures, sometimes the understanding of certain stuff. So paraphrasing is important. Um, throw people out 
is important. Um, you know, it's like kind of has questions when you don't understand or it's not clear some decision or some proposal. Uh, mirroring is, I don't know, it's important when, when <coughs> you say that comment. And sometimes mirroring is good when somebody's saying something that it might seem insulting to. You know, like maybe somebody took it wrong or can take that wrong. So like you kind of like, as a facilitator, instead of instigating and saying, you are being, I don't know, rude or whatever. Um, I think the role of the facilitator is to have like that balance in, in the room. So Can give you a chance. Give me of, an, an example. Uh, can you model mirroring? Can you <coughs> model mirroring is your question. <laughs> you say exactly what the person said because often quiet voices say something and the group doesn't hear it because they're not used to listening to that person so the facilitator can draw out that voice just by saying exactly what the person said and when like the shape of the room is odd like mm -hmm. I know downstairs sometimes the shape of the room is a little weird so maybe sometimes people don't like see the person who's talking so they can hear it's helpful yeah like if savvy I also think that like that can be a problem like when maybe someone whose voice isn't often heard says something and then someone else and they're like whatever and then someone else says it and they're like yeah uh, that's like a yeah. problem so well it's a problem if the facilitator don't say well that's right. what just so and so said right. like if, you know if you have a facilitator that is mm -hmm. like very self yeah, when some dude says it it's, it's the right thing Or if you use fancy words to say that that's why like the important part is what Matt was saying. You just say the exact same thing that the other person instead of like fancy it up. Uh, but it's more like if somebody either is not being <coughs> hurt or somebody is using uh, something to like instigate or um, so gathering ideas um, is like trying when people don't don't speak much to or people are having like prop like when you see the room like people are like what is just happening? <laughs> what is coming? Yeah. <laughs> should we should we like stop and eat? We should just keep going and then when they come in have it set up then we'll go. Okay. So we're gonna just go through this. Um Stacking, we already talked about it. Tracking, I think tracking is very important, um, especially for note taking. Like, if you see that the note, like as a facilitator, you see that the note taker is just like somewhere else or not taking notes. Um, it's important to be, um, keep, keep track of the conversations and that they're. This is happening. a key, key. Thing for facilitators. Notice that three conversations are going on at the same time. Separate them. Tell back to the group, hey, you're talking about food, performers, and you know, budget all at the same time. Let's tackle one first. Let's talk about this one first. That's cracking. <coughs> How do you, as a facilitator, learn tones that you have this talking about you know, the cost of, or the budget, that the budget is not enough food, but you're talking about what we're going to eat, not how much it's going to cost. You can say, well, you know, it's, it's either, you could say, we're going to be there in a little bit, like, can you wait for that? <coughs> or if it's not in the agenda, you can say, well, maybe we could, if you have time, maybe we put that in the next agenda, and you have, like, 
have maybe another piece of paper or or at the end of your notes you have some like pipe rack or garden. They call it different things, but like a space to put some of the stuff that is done in the agenda when somebody broke up. Um, and I would say I always to check with the group when you make a, a, a major like process shift mm -hmm. to say, is everyone okay with this? You know, um, Actually, you should say, are there any concerns with this? Because if you're too wishy-washy, you're like, okay, there's these three things, what do people want to talk about? Then you can be talking about process in the meeting forever, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, more effective is often to say, Sounds like we need to decide the budget first. Any concerns with tackling the budget first? None, you move on to it. And if people say, no, 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 I really want to talk about this first, shift it if you need to. Is anybody, are there any concerns about shifting? Are there any concerns about eating? Yes. about this after, like, we can always talk about that stuff. Um, encouraging is, like, kind of, like, saying, like, throwing people out, gathering ideas, like, trying to create an, an open space for everybody to participate. Um, and, you know, you, you can do it in many ways, but usually um, it's more at the beginning of the meeting kind of thing. I don't know, I don't do that much. Encouraging? Yeah. Yeah. Like Does anyone who hasn't spoken yet want to say something? That's an encouraging kind of thing? Or <laughs> I, I have, you, you seem to know a lot about this, but haven't said much today. Could you say something about that? That's encouraging. <laughs> And that's why it's good to have a co-facilitator because sometimes you like not have the time to see what's going on or who's like who's like not really being <coughs> present or being part of, of the conversation. So like usually the co-facilitator is the one that helps to do that. Balancing again, like try to stop dynamics that can be happening in the group or that might not be group dynamics, but like if somebody's really stressed or somebody's like really distracted, you you try to help to balance the meeting, making space the same thing, kind of balancing, or when it's a lot of stuff going on and somebody's having a side conversation, like sometimes they're like be like, hey, why like being confrontational about this stuff. Um, just having silence, like, and so usually people are like, what's going on? Why, why are we stopping? And that person get, oh, it's me. Um, do you guys, did anyone have, like, a lot of problems with, like, a couple people in your group that, like, always distracted and doing other stuff or interrupting? Did anyone have... An example of something like that? A good example? <coughs> um, that was a controversial one. Um, Judy really likes to talk about process stuff a lot, uh, like bigger picture stuff. So that's sort of uh, an example that uh, sometimes we're talking about like uh, something really different and then it goes back to. Uh, you know, we have to get the process down, which is actually a great thing, but it, it diverts from the agenda. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, so it's all that stuff, like, <coughs> I feel like happens a lot, like cell phone stuff, like people are like in their cell phones. So if you don't have a rule about it, you know, it could become an issue. Um, or, I don't know, um, Texting, I mean, is another one, or having side conversations. Um, I don't know. Eating. Sometimes in a meeting, like having a loud chip bag, or you know. So like, I'm not saying that you shouldn't do all those things, but like 
maybe have a conversation about, like if we're gonna be talking about something that is really gonna be a heated conversation and very serious and everybody, like you want everybody to be on the same page and then interruptions so. But it's, it's more like preparing before a meeting than like in the middle of the meeting. Like if, if you already permitted that two people are in the phone, like it's hard to break the, the moment. But if we, it becomes a big issue. And I think sometimes part of facilitating, if you have a group, a very supportive group, or a group that people you know already, it's easier to facilitate. I feel like it's easier to facilitate than a group that I don't know. Um, listening for common ground is kind of like the same uh, topic of like um, trying to. <coughs> As, as a facilitator trying to be in this space of like, I just going to be very objective and in certain things and proactive of, okay, I, I'm going to believe that everybody have a good intent of what they say and then respecting what people say in, but at the same time, like, if something that I feel like is rude or is directed to someone and is, is creating this imbalance, you, you could say, well, <coughs> is this what you're trying to say, or you know, you or or you really are having an issue, or like be clear about what is being said is important in a meeting because people can totally take your meeting away from where you're going with a bad comment or with bad energy. So listening for for common ground is is, is important to to get to an agreement. So especially if you're trying to run a space that is going to be consensus based and you started to create those dynamics, you're not going to get anywhere. Um, and clarifying. I mean, I, I think that's probably the most important. If you as a facilitator that are paying all the attention to the group don't understand something, probably a lot of people didn't understand, right? So kind of like asking for clarification or when somebody's asking too many questions about something that you were ready, or or a decision has been made, and then like a lot of people have a lot of questions, sometimes it's good to clarify. Well, we made the decision. This is what it means. But well, this is what I understand it means, and get an agreement again in, in the group. Because even sometimes some decisions in a in a meeting get get to happen then everybody at, at the end of the meeting or in the middle of the, you make a decision at the beginning of the meeting and then people are like, is this what we really decided? Like, I didn't understand that. Like, So it's important to clarify <coughs> that in the moment because if not, it's gonna be a lot of questions. So if you have a question, usually other people have questions. Um, I don't know, anyone have any other tips that you guys use in your facilitating meetings that is not here for the thing to support. There are a lot of other tips and the other handouts that we gave, uh, including self-facilitation, encouraging people to realize that when they're taking up too much space um, or interrupting people or speaking over people. Um, and there, um, yeah, there, there's a lot of other things that, that when to make an intervention, there, you know, there's a lot written about that. When can you, if you can preempt something that's gonna happen or cause an issue in the, in the meeting, that's better than reacting to something. If you know someone always, you know, takes the group off track, try to preempt that with keeping people on track. <coughs> And I think it's important to have agreements on, on that, like times that meetings are gonna, so it's a lot, of, a lot of things that you can do before running a meeting that will help you to have a smoother meeting, right? Like have an agenda, have understand, like maybe a, a, if it's a new group and you don't have a set of, set of rules, like everybody listens to each other, everybody respects each other, like whatever. So if you, if you have something visual, you don't have to do it all the time, but if, you know, 
once in a while it's good to have something, a piece of paper, these things are not okay, these things are okay, this is what we, how we run meetings. Um, have, like I say, a, a not, uh, <coughs> not taker, timekeeper. So it, it's a lot of that stuff in, in, in the documents that, that we have, how to, how to run a meeting, how to have a good agenda, and a lot of tips on that. But um, I think we all hungry. Uh, so we should break. And we probably should just serve our, ourselves and come back so we eat and keep running the meeting so we can end on time. Cool. Thank you.